It was, the, it was the guarantor of Turkey's secular nature, has a number of coups in the past when it thought that that secularism was challenged, has been marginalized. There's been court cases where these ex-generals are now being run, run before courts and accused of treason and, and trying to overthrow the government. Clear shot across the bow to the elites and the military leaders that, you know, it's a different Turkey now. It is a democratic Turkey, and you don't have um, a, a special right to intercede um, in our democratic politics. But, uh, Mayor, some people are saying that this is a 180-degree shift in how Turkey relates to Israel and how it relates to the rest of the Arab world and how it could relate to the U.S. I disagree. I don't think this is really a big change. Uh, The same government just two years ago was uh, trying to mediate between Syria and Israel. This government, uh, uh, the uh, AK Party government, is also trying to uh, move Turkey towards Europe. So there are certain elements in Turkish foreign policy that continue. This government decided, uh, when it came to power in 2003, to have a zero problems policy with its neighbors. So in that sense, it wanted to improve Turkey's relations with the Middle East. Maybe this is something new that we should talk about. Oh, Mayor Tashpinar, he's at the U.S. National War College. We'll take a short break, and when we come back, your calls. And welcome back as we talk about Turkey, its role in the Middle East, uh, its role, its relationship to Israel after the incident uh, of killing nine people on board a flotilla trying to take uh, goods into Gaza. We'll uh, take your calls in just a few moments. We have three guests in the studio, Stephen Cook of the Council on Foreign Relations, James Kitfield of National Journal Magazine, and Omer Tashbinar of the U.S. National War College. You can join us by phone, by email. You can also join us on Facebook and Twitter. Omer, is Turkey trying to isolate Israel? I think Turkey is trying to isolate this current government, the Netanyahu uh, government. It has a major problem with the radical shift uh, that has taken place in Israeli politics. Uh, As I said just two years ago, when Ehud Olmert was uh, prime minister, uh, Turkey uh, had a much better relationship with Israel. I don't think it is Turkey's categorically opposed to Israel. It wants to have good relations uh, uh, with Israel. But there is a problem in the way Ankara perceives this current government. But it is because of the isolation of Gaza, James Kidfield? Not totally. I mean, the, the Netanyahu government has been seen. We've had our own problems with this government, seen as, you know, when Vice President Biden was there earlier this year, announced that they're going to uh, increase settlements in East Jerusalem, mostly Arab East Jerusalem. Um, they will not freeze settlements. This government is seen as, as dragging its feet on the peace process, and that's very sensitive to to all the Muslim countries. I, I disagree slightly with, with uh, Omer and Jim. I, I think that any Israeli government would be maintaining a blockade. And in fact, a, a government that was slightly to the left of the Netanyahu government would be more 
interested in intensifying this blockade so as not to be attacked by the right wing. Uh, we've seen this happen. Netanyahu, for all of his problems, has uh, has r- relaxed some of the restrictions on Palestinians in the West Bank. I think that on the question of Gaza, uh, it has been a searing experience for the Israelis. From their perspective, they withdrew in 2005. They didn't get peace and they didn't get international credit for it. And uh, as a result, uh, any Israeli government would be forced to maintain a rather restrictive blockade on the Gaza Strip. Um, here. But I think this government uh, in Israel uh, has certain qualities that d- differs it from previous Israeli governments. It is not as committed as previous Israeli governments to a two-state solution, to a peace process. This is why... Uh, the Obama administration has new problems with Israel, and I don't think a, uh, uh, another uh, Israeli government would have taken such a hawkish policy on uh, this last incident, for instance. One of the facts that we know about this last incident is that the uh, Turkish ship that was uh, 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 attacked, basically, uh, was in international waters. So they could have waited very easily till the ship enters Israeli territorial waters, and then they would have been in a much more legitimate position according to international law. This current government in Israel doesn't seem to care much about international law at all. James. And, and I would just say, you know, our aggravations, you know, this this was an aggravation because we were just about to get a, a fourth round of sanctions against Iran in the, in the United Nations Security Council. So right at that moment, you change the subject in a way that's very unhelpful to the, to the Gaza blockade. We saw this this bungled assassination in Dubai where they they used foreign passports um, and, and had their diplomatic personnel kicked out of Australia and Britain, which are not exactly anti-Israeli countries. Um, you, you, you saw this, this faux pas with Biden. It, it does, this government does seem to um, be pugnacious in a way that, that really looks at the tactical at the expense of the strategic. Right now, the Obama administration has a strategic plan for confronting Iran, and they see this government as, as working at cross-purposes frequently with them. So this new vote at the U.N. Security Council on Wednesday, what will Turkey's role be there, Stephen Cook? Well, the expectation is that uh, as long as the United States uh, has the votes to go forward with sanctions, the Turks will vote no. Uh, They hammered out a deal in cooperation with the Brazilians. Uh, called the what's referred to as the Tehran Research Reactor Deal, which would allow the Iranians to transfer 1,200 kilograms of low-enriched uranium to Turkey. They saw this as a step forward, as a way of building trust for a broader negotiation about Iran's nuclear program, which the United States rejected. Uh, three weeks ago, there was evidence, uh, some indication that the Turks would abstain. Now, after the, the reactor deal, it's likely that they'll vote no. So what kind of pressure is the U.S. putting on Turkey now, James? Well, I don't think they think that Turkey has the votes to actually stop a, a resolution, so it might be kind of a free no. I think we're, we're, not, we're trying to sort of back away, and I think even Israel is trying to back away from a situation they know is inflammatory with Turkey. Every, you know, both Israel and the United States still consider Turkey. Turkey a valuable ally. Let's not forget that, you know, we have a huge base in southern Turkey in Incirlik that is critical to resupplying both our forces in Iraq and Afghanistan. They have maintained uh, letting us use that base. They are a valued member of NATO. They have troops in Afghanistan. So we were trying to back away from the abyss a bit here and say, look, you know, hmm. um, there's been some misunderstandings, but let's let's let cooler ha- heads prevail. But, um, Harry, you've said in the past that you think Turkey is misreading the U.S. administration. I think so. And I think partly the Obama administration is to blame for sending mixed signals to Turkey. Such as? Because the Turkish Foreign Service uh, uh, and the Turkish Foreign Minister believe that there is a letter. uh, I should not believe. They they have a letter from President Obama, which they believe uh, authorizes Turkey to uh, have uh, such a uh, uranium uh, enrichment uh, swap with uh, Iran, and they believe that what they have done, what they have achieved with the Brazilians in Tehran, is in accordance with the diplomatic negotiations that they had with Washington. So they were under the impression that Washington would agree to such a deal. Of course, uh, uh, in that sense, they believe that uh, uh, the Obama administration still wants to engage uh, uh, Iran, and they believe that uh, this 
sanctions will not go anywhere. The Turkish perception of sanctions, economic sanctions, is that it's a slippery road towards mm. confrontation. That has been the path in Iraq, and they don't want to see the same. And they've been get, getting, according to them, mixed messages from Washington about what to do with Iran. Mixed messages. Well, I think that's true, and, and you see this frequently when someone wants to sort of uh, have a greater role in sort of foreign affairs, a new assertiveness, uh, sometimes they, they stumble because they're not used to doing they're, they're working outside their comfort zone here. The, the problem with that swap deal was we had, th- we had agreed to a similar deal last October when that was basically all the low enriched uranium we thought Iran had. Well, Iran's been enriching very aggressively since then, so the same amount now is only 